So in this video, we're going to look at molecular polarity and compare that with bond polarity. And the important thing to recognize is that while these two concepts are related, they're not the same thing. So we've already seen that um, due to differences in electronegativity of different atoms that an individual bond might be polar. If I have two identical atoms that have the same electronegativity, there won't be a positive end or negative end of this bond. This bond would be characterized as being non-polar covalent. However, if I have two different atoms, say a carbon atom and an oxygen atom, then there won't be um, equal sharing of electrons. In each of these covalent bonds here, what we will have is a more negative end of the bond and a more positive end of the bond. When we have a, 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 an object or a region of space that has a positive end and a negative end, we refer to that as being a dipole. It has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. That's an important piece of terminology that we're going to keep coming back to. So if you add together the bond dipoles of a molecule, you obtain the overall polarity of a molecule. So this chlorine molecule doesn't have a bond dipole because there's no, um, so the molecule, it doesn't have a bond dipole either. So there's no dipole. Now, if we look at this carbon dioxide molecule here, we've got a positive end there and a negative end there. We've got a positive end here and a negative end there. And there is not a, there clearly isn't a positive end of this molecule and a negative end of this molecule. It's kind of like, you know, this alternating um, charge where it goes negative, positive, negative. So, you know, the two bond dipoles, um, they don't add together to give an overall molecular dipole. So again, no dipole. If I look at this um, methane molecule here, the hydrogen end of each of these carbon hydrogen bonds will be a little bit positive, and the carbon end will be a little bit negative. And you can see there isn't an overall positive and negative end to this molecule. Again, we got no dipole. It's kind of all over the place. Boron trifluoride, the same deal. This one's pulling up and to the left. This one's pulling up and to the right. So the left and right components cancel out. This one's pulling down and that cancels out the up components of there. There isn't a negative end and a positive end to this molecule, it's kind of all over the place. So what we're really saying is that when the bond dipoles cancel out, i.e. when you have identical electron groups or there are no polar bonds in your molecule, then your molecule will be non-polar and we'll have a very even distribution of electrons around my, our central atom. When the bond dipoles don't sum to zero, the molecule will be polar. So you can see here that we have two atoms, oxygen and hydrogen. The difference in electronegativities are such that the hydrogen is going to the end of, the bond, of these bonds will be a little bit positive and the oxygen end will be a little bit negative. And in this case, you clearly see that there's a positive end to the molecule and a negative end of the molecule. This guy's going up and to the right. This one's going up and to the left. The left and the right components cancel out, leaving a net bond dipole um, that runs directly up. Here's a molecule that is T-shaped. Oh, sorry, it's not T-shaped, it's seesaw. What we see here is fluorine is always the negative end of a bond. In the sulfur will be the positive end of each of those bonds. The left and right components um, cancel out. One bond is pulling down and forwards. The other one is pulling downs and down and back. And the net result is that we have a negative end of the molecule here, and this end of the molecule will be positive. So when we um, when the bond dipoles do not sum to zero, 
when they add to give a net um, dipole, then our molecule will be polar. And just like for a bond, you can indicate the overall dipole with a polar arrow. So typically, when do you kind of, you know, see this? Well, you're normally going to see the dipole is not cancelling out when you have like multiple different types of bonds or different atoms that are attached to your molecule. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to decide what the overall um, direction of the dipole might be, and other times it's easier to decide. So in this first case, it's pretty obvious the dire direction of the overall um, dipole. We've got a carbon hydrogen end. Carbon is the least electronegative, and it's always the, of the nonmetal, so it's always the positive end. Chlorine's in group 4A. Uh, carbon's in group 4A and um, chlorine is in group 7a so these guys um, chlorine is the more electronegative element so they're going to be a little electronegative and the carbon will be relatively positive so when I look at this all of the electrons are kind of getting pulled towards these chlorines and away from the hydrogen so the overall dipole will be that the hydrogen end of the molecule will be a little bit positive and then we're going to have these three chlorines at the base here and that's going to be the negative end of the molecule. Now when you get something like this guy, carbon trichlorofluoride, it's a little more um, complicated because everything is pulling away from the carbon but what's going to win out? Is it going to be this really super electronegative fluorine that's pulling up or is it going to be these three less electronegative chlorines that are pulling down? So in this case, you know, it's kind of, you could justify drawing the arrow either way. We'd really have to do some fairly complicated math to figure out whether they, um, they what direction the dipole was. But what we do know is that the molecule will be polar. So one thing to be very, very aware of is that different types of atoms on our central atom or the presence of lone pairs on the central atom is very strong um, evidence that the molecule may be polar. Now, it's not always the case, but it's very strong evidence. You need to think about whether you're going to have an asymmetric distribution of electrons around your central atom. Are they being pulled collectively in one direction over another? So another little bit of language when we're talking about the polarity of molecules is what we call the dipole moment. And the dipole moment is a measure of how uneven the distribution of electrons is in a molecule. And um, it's a complicated um, technique for measuring it, but effectively what we do is we establish an electric field and the molecules will align themselves in that electric field if they are polar. They'll align themselves so that the positive ends of the molecules are directed towards the negative side of that field and the negative um, ends of your molecules are directed towards the positive plate in that field. And so the extent of orientation within that electric field um, is how we measure the dipole moment. Now, what you want to know is this is big dipole moment equals very polar, but also zero dipole moment equals non-polar. Okay guys, so that concludes section 7.6 which was concerned with uh, molecular structure and polarity. This information is important for the lab that you'll be doing this week. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of, um, we'll be revisiting it again. Um, if you need any help going through the content, um, please don't be afraid um, to just reach out to me. Okay, bye.